we were thinking of some sets, and we're trying to work out, because we knew that, for instance, if you that, think about integers, uh, I, I think you guys would think about natural numbers, but I can make the same argument for integers, you'll see why shortly. Um, there's an infinite number of numbers in this set, right, which makes it a bit difficult. So when we compare these, we try and compare their signs, right? There's a fancy little trick that I'm going to show you, which um, it has to do with something very pedestrian and very simple. Um, two proofs that are very, very different. And they both have to do with diagonals. You're like, diagonals? What do diagonals have to do with anything? Diagonals are really boring. Like, this is a diagonal, right? Um, here we go. Let's draw one in. That's a diagonal. What's useful about diagonals? The answer is a lot. Okay. Now, before I show you how they're useful, let's make a heading, which is comparing the sizes of sets. Okay, so here's my question. Let's start with an easy example. If we have two sets, how do we compare their sizes? Well, depending on what the sets are, this is sometimes very easy. Example. Okay, let's define a set. Let's use our set notation. Okay. Let's start with a set like, say, oh, I don't know, um, the prime numbers under 10. Prime numbers under 10. What are the prime numbers under 10? Uh, 2, 3, 5, 7. That's it. Good. Okay, there's my wonky looking set. Alright, there you go. So the size of this set, the size of A, is 4. No big deal. Okay? Now, I can name any other set you like. For instance, if we call B, oh, I don't know, let's call it the even numbers um, between, not inclusive, but between 10 and 20. Even numbers between 10 and 20. Can we do that? I think it'd be 12, 14, 16, sorry, 10 and 20. I meant to say 10 and 20. I was thinking 20 and I said 12, sorry. So there you go. There's even numbers between 10 and 20 and 20. Is that okay? So, therefore, the size of B is also 4. Okay? So you're like, what's the big deal? I know the size of this one, I know the size of this one, therefore, they're the same. Okay? So in comparing the sizes of these sets, the way I do it is, well, I work out what the size of each one is, I see that they're identical, so I say the sizes are identical. Okay? Now, I hope you can see it, and some of you came up against this as you started to argue with yourselves on your personal affinity. You can't apply this logic to these sets. You can't do it, right? Because if, for instance, instead of A, I said, well, let's make A, you know, this, okay? You, you're going to be counting forever. Um, you might say, you might say, well, the size of this set is, you know, infinite, okay? <laughs> But infinity is not a number. It's not like, oh, there it is, and I've got it you know, on, written on a card, okay? It's an idea, it's a concept, it's a useful one. I can count and never get to the end. But it doesn't help us answer this question. Okay? So, how do we do it? Let me give you another illustration of this same picture, okay? But a different kind of process, right? Let's draw these sets, but let's do it in a bit of a, um, let's do it in a Venn diagram. I've got A and B over here. You'll notice I've drawn it like these, right? Because, have a look at the numbers in the sets. We have a name for these two sets and how they relate to each other. There are no elements in common, so they are... They are disjoint or they're mutually exclusive. Either are fine. Okay. So, I'm going to put all of the elements in there. Sorry, I'm sticking with blue. Two, three, five, seven. Twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Okay. Now, because they have the same size, I can do this. I can say, look, every element in each of these sets, right, can be matched or paired with an element in the other set. Look, we can draw it. Let's like put the 2 with the 12. Okay. Yes, this is function. Let's put with the 3 with the 14. Let's put the 5 with it just to shake it up. Okay, let's put the 5 with the 18. Oh, wow. I know. Just stand back, everyone. Uh, 7 with the... 16. Okay, look, see? Privilege. I have matched up every element from set A with every element in set B. Okay. Now, you're like, well, what's the big deal? We already established this. But the reason why this is useful, why this is a better approach, is because 
I want you to now picture, okay? Um, you go to you go to job purchase, you walk across the street, okay? And then you see a whole bunch of boys and girls and you know, what do they do? They're like doing some dance aerobics or something like that. And you're like, I wonder, I wonder if I want to compare the size of the sets of boys and girls. Okay? So I'm trying to compare these and thankfully they are mutually exclusive. Okay? Now, you can do this one way, which is I can count them all up. But you're like, ah, you know, little kids, they're all moving around, I, I'll keep losing track, that kind of thing. It's a difficult thing to do, okay? So instead of counting one and then counting the other and trying to come up with the same number, here's what I'll do. I'll do this instead. I'll just say, look, every boy, right, go find a girl. However many of, of you there are, okay? So, you know, you've got boy one, boy two, boy three, and so on. Right? And then you've got girl one, and girl two, and girl three, and so on. And you don't know how many there are, but if at the end, after they've all sorted themselves out and hopefully gotten over boy girl germs, right? If they have all matched up, you don't need to know how many there are. Because you have matched up every single one with another one in the other set. So then you can say, okay, the set of boys and the set of girls, same size. Does that make sense? If I can match them up like this, then I can say the sizes are equal, even if I don't know what the sizes are. 